Whoa, welcome to the fun zone. I'm Nordis to freeze. It is great to be here in the fun zone. I'm an artist out of Nashville, Tennessee, and I started fun zone during quarantine as a way to connect with other artists now that I'm not on tour. And I am so excited about today. This is going to be awesome. Um, I'm going to be talking to an artist that I really respect and really admire and uh, found organically just by genuinely loving their music. It is a real treat for me to welcome our next guest, an innovator of music. Please welcome Glitch Gum. Hey, what's up? <laughs> How's it going? Hey. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, may I refer to you as as Glitch or Glitch Gum, or do you have a name you'd like to go by? Um, if you if you want to, you can uh, refer to me as as Mr. Gum uh, Glitch. You can say GG, whatever. My name is Luke, by the way. Luke. You would rather call me that. That's fine too. It's it's great to officially meet you. Although we've met once before, you said. Right? Yeah, I was I was at the show you did at Max Basement with Future Crib. I was there with my brother Seth. That's crazy. Wait, did y'all play or were you just there hanging out? We were just there because like we're we're homies with Future Crib and uh we actually my family lives in Georgia. I'm I'm here at the house in Marietta, Georgia. And Ooh. so we were like, Yeah, we should we gotta go support the boys, you know? And and you <laughs> yeah. were playing as well, and so we're like, Yeah. Seth was like, have you seen Freeze play a show before? I'm like, no. He's like, you, you got to come. You, it's crazy. <laughs> no way. Dude, that's awesome. I can't believe that. So you know Future Crib just from when you moved to Nashville? Yeah, I got the shirt right here. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Yeah, I love awesome. that shirt. Yeah, no. Um, all the all the people from Future Crib are in the same class as Seth. So, you know, when he started going to Belmont, he's like, Yo, you know, you got to check out this band called Future Crib. They're like super cool. And so just wow. kind of them since and then like i started going to belmont when they put out the friends album and that just rocked my world like for real it's so good <laughs> it is really good it's they're a super talented bunch uh for real they, they all helped me they played in my band you know a lot obviously and also yeah. uh we record like at johnny and bryce's house like to tape you know and they're just amazing engineers and everything what they do is so cool for real it's so awesome <laughs> yeah well it's, i'm glad you read that show in a max basement those those shows were always crazy in atlanta yeah. and uh it's great to that that's crazy because i i do remember meeting you there now that, that you say that but i just organically have just come across your music and i just absolutely love it so it's a real treat to be talking to you thank you so much i really do appreciate it it's a treat to be talking to you too i mean like you're kind of a legend here in this like little boulevard of independent music <laughs> that we have throughout these campuses I that mean, means the a space lot. from the freeze fest like it's crazy yeah. did you so, uh do you do you go are you in school do you go to belmont in nashville i do go to belmont in nashville i'm a sophomore right now wow that's crazy do you think you're gonna keep going i mean music is really taking off i feel like for you right now <laughs> it really depends like i i would love to like stay and finish my degree so that i can have something to lean back on like if like my my time as an artist kind of runs out at some point but uh i mean hey if the music thing takes off to a point where i just can't do school anymore hey i wouldn't be i wouldn't be mad at that either you know i'm just trying right. to see where it goes you know and keep my bases covered you know in the meantime yeah totally that's cool um how long have you been making music is that what you came to nashville to study and pursue yeah i i i'm a music student i'm one of the commercial music students my primary instrument is bass. I've been playing music forever. Well, not playing music, but I've been in love with music forever. Like since I was a baby, just like music was just like a very foundational thing. And so when I was like 10 years old, I started playing like drums and picking up guitar and bass and stuff. And like we, I mean, me and my brother have just been listening to music our whole lives. And so that that's kind of the glue that's held us together. And so then he started going to Belmont for audio engineering. Um, and uh, so I started like visiting Belmont and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I definitely really like this community and like these programs and stuff. Like, I definitely want to go to Belmont when I come. Right. And so um, up until that point, I was like, I was doing programming and stuff like uh, working on electronic music, working in like a rock music i had like a pop punk band back in michigan where i grew up um when i was in high school and then like when i got to belmont 
uh, I think that was around the time I was listening to 100 Gex, and that's where Glitch Gum kind of started, was in my dorm room at Belmont, just like, I want to try something new, and I, I want to try the style, and then that's just kind of where it happened, you know? Wow, so, really? Crazy. So, so you, hearing 100 Gex, like, influenced this project like that was kind of that was like a big influence uh and maybe continues to be um which uh, we should obviously congratulations on the 100x remix like what on earth that's the coolest thing ever right thank I mean, you so much oh my gosh when i heard like when i got word of that remix from cm10 and he showed me the remix i was like oh my gosh like, i was blown <laughs> away bro okay so i the story never gets old. I was in my dorm or well, apartment because now I live in in uh. Well, I don't, are you familiar with the apartments? You go. To, you went to Lipscomb, right? Yeah, that's right. How'd you know that? Yeah, yeah. I went to Lipscomb, the smaller one of the two. Because I I keep asking people. I'm like, just did Freeze go to Belmont? Because you like everybody at Belmont talks about you, and then like people are like, no, he actually goes to Lipscomb, and so I've just heard <laughs> that enough times that like I remember that. Yeah. But yeah. Right. Anyway, sorry to be like creepy on the first meeting but like no dude no it's no, great. yes so like in my apartment i was just chilling and then cm10 calls me out of the blue is like i have something to show you i'm like what is this is this a new song you about to drop some new heat and it was the 100 gex viewers and i'm like you have got to be kidding me man. okay like oh, i man. i hate bragging and stuff like that but hearing like laura less's verse on a song that i was featured on or be a part of in any way ridiculous and she killed it and dylan killed it as well like they both did their thing and i was just like they i was really just watching did. it happen just like thank you lord for putting me in the situation right right where this could happen you know <laughs> it, it really is i mean you know it the song is incredible and it's it's well deserved but it is also one of those things where it's like so early on in your career too to like this artist like influences you to like remix your song i just feel like that is and it's just insane. So ridiculous. Because, like, let me tell you, the only inspiration for, like, months, months on end of this project was 100 Gex because they were the only people for a while that I could look to, like, okay, this is how I want to sound and this is kind of what I want to do. They were really doing a lot of things before, like, Hyperpop started catching on and, like, the whole Hyperpop playlist thing. So right, they really were the blueprint for me. And it's very obvious, like, listening to, like, earlier songs and even, like, my songs now because i have that like high-pitched voice effect and all that so like just for that for it to come full circle just like i still can't believe it still can't believe it it really is crazy ridiculous um, i just give yeah. my thanks any any chance i can get so so i'm interested how you say 100 gex are your first introduction to hyper pop uh, uh is, is that the music you would consider glitch gum too is that would you consider it hyper pop is, i mean if you were to define it i know genres can be annoying at times but Right, yeah. So I would definitely consider myself hyper pop. Um, I think hyper pop is definitely, it is a sound, but it's also an aesthetic. Right. Um, that's what that's what I've seen. Like a lot of the people who are considered hyper pop, or I don't want to use quotes, but like people who are considered hyper pop. You right. could listen to two like hyper pop artists in a row and be like, these aren't the same. Yeah. But totally. but I definitely consider myself hyper pop, and I I, I like one. Most of the influences I, I take in when I'm making glitch gum music are from the hyper pop atmosphere and cool. stuff like that. So like I would I would I don't feel weird like calling myself hyper pop. You know? Yeah, I I have a like I want to talk to you a little bit more about hyper pop. Uh, I I love hundred gex. I love your music, and from there I've been listening to uh, you put out a playlist. I think it's called like songs that glitch gum likes to ooze to or something yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so yeah that's right and uh so i started listening to different like songs in here and i've been getting more into uh the genre in general and so the people who are listening to this who are just like fans of you might find these questions a little bit ignorant but for for people who are more common folk who aren't as like uh introduced to the genre i was curious right, right. um so david shoddy david shoddy yeah he's an artist um I started listening to some of their music and uh, I was wondering like, is that considered, it's like a little bit more of maybe a hip hop influence, but still kind of got this like hyper pop uh, like sound and aesthetic to it as well. Yeah. Would you say that? Is that, is that like a, is it maybe like a fusion of those two things? And is there like a big movement in that like culmination? Yeah. Well, that's kind of where we get into some tricky territory because um, uh, there there's, 
people say hyperpop and some and then some people say glitchcore and so there, glitchcore. there's kind of like a, a big like i wouldn't say controversy but kind of like what is hyperpop what is glitchcore are they the same thing are they different whatever and right. uh i don't i don't say what i what i think is i wouldn't say what i think is truth but i feel like what what i've seen labeled as glitchcore is more like hip-hop oriented stuff with like hyperpop influence and then like i feel like hyperpop is more like kind of like pop influenced music right but i mean you i feel like you could call it whatever you want like no one really cares yeah. but yeah i i definitely see that as a movement i i'm seeing a lot of like artists kind of come out of the underground kind of like david shoddy people like glaive or like parker with a four um mm. instead of an a like people like yeah. that like they, they like i mean they've been written up in like new york times and stuff like that um people like uh sebi people like that i put on my playlist not a lot of people right. know them but like they're re they really are like making waves and so like and um i i've had some talks with people where they've said i really think this hyper pop movement they've compared it a lot to the emo rap movement from a few years ago with people like little right. peep and x and people like that in terms of how it just took over everything like suddenly right it, so, it does feel like it's kind of taken over for sure i mean yeah especially with like tiktok and all that like it's kind of becoming like a thing you know <laughs> totally it it's like relevant in a way that it, it doesn't hold on to any uh baggage from like past ideas of music i feel like if i feel like let's say for instance even the album like you know people just putting out songs which you're already seeing that in a lot of other genres and in pop music but even more so it's like like when i was looking through david shoddy's like discography it's like almost all collaborative right. and it's all and it's like songs just being dropped all the time there's uh and then obviously there's a big tiktok influence to it it's almost just like a stream of the content. output of the output of hyper pop is insane like really? as yeah like people put out stuff all the time and they'll just drop it whenever they want to like no rollout it's it's intimidating for a lot of traditional artists i i mean i consider myself kind of traditional in the sense like i'm i feel like i'm a nashville artist i roll out and promote things in like a very nashville way like two weeks till the song comes out pre-save it whatever like right. trying to build the hype beforehand and i also take like months to mix and master and stuff um but i'm also in a genre where people were literally just like make songs and then drop them as soon as they think they're done and it's insane and it's awesome but it's also kind of intimidating <laughs> yeah right totally I, I find i definitely find it intimidating it's it's a, a weird thing about being an artist is you you are always adapting and changing and i don't know my observations on hyper pop and like listening to it more it is it is just interesting to see things that you see as like a foundational block of like how artists do things and seeing that kind of disrupted um, right. that's even how I felt about TikTok for a long time. I didn't have it because I didn't really understand it. And then finally getting it and like just being a part of a new culture that's like exists within a younger community, maybe even younger than me, you know, it might, it goes all the way down to like high school or even like late middle school. Like, right, right. it's just a very, it's very interesting. Um, and I've really enjoyed the playlist you gave, uh, your playlist. I started looking through more. One more artist I want to ask you about is, do you, do you know about six, four, five, a R? I don't know how you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, six four five AR. <laughs> yeah, really, really interesting. Like hip hop with just yeah. like a, like this voice. It's pitched like so high, just like very wild. It, it's so high, and it's like a, <laughs> it's like a chipmunk almost. Or people have compared him to like Mickey Mouse and stuff. Yeah, it's almost on. You almost just can't understand any of it at all. Which which right. I, I really like you. Okay, so you just put out a song December seventh. Awesome with. Uh, I don't want to mispronounce their name. I, I memorized it before I came on, but with Digi, how do you pronounce? I think it's Digi Tetto. Digi Tetto. It's in the it's in the song. So, uh, right. Uh, and then you also put out uh, Ki Kyoto in yeah. November, and uh, you, you you've like kind of got just like I mean even, even where we're just talking about it, you've got a lot of music that you've been putting out. I mean the whole project started during the pandemic, right? It started like your first songs at least on here. Our, our March is March 13th, which is, yeah. that was the week that lockdown happened. That was right? the week lockdown hit. Did you mean for that to happen? Or were you planning that release? Like, and then everything went crazy. I was planning that release a uh, couple weeks before 
that happened. Like I wrote that song maybe October, November 2019, and I was getting this EP like ready to go, and I was okay. Okay, I'm gonna drop this as my first single, and uh, uh, so I was like, okay, like I'll drop this on this date. Um, and then we got sent home for spring break, and uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, spring break, right? Quotation right. marks. Uh, and then they're like, yeah, no, everything's getting locked down. I'm like, great. Well, I guess I'm still gonna like release this song and stuff. So I did. I definitely didn't mean for that to happen, but yeah, the start of Glitchgum at least release wise in the pandemic and all the music I've released is in this year and like never wow. met was fully conceptualized in the pandemic. Like Kit, CM10 great. reaches out to me from California and he's like, Hey, I got a song and I'm over here in Georgia. And I'm like, send it to me. <laughs> like, let's yeah. make something happen. And he goes, Hey, we should make a video. And so I go into my backyard with my Buzz Lightyear onesie that I conveniently copped the week before. <laughs> and, and and then he edited it together. Like we literally made a a record to, or remotely in the pandemic. It's just weird to think about. That is wild. It's so weird. <laughs> so with that song specifically, I, I told you there's like, I, I really enjoyed, there's like four different versions of it. Four different versions, right? And, and they're all great. It did Traditionally, I feel like people would be a little bit apprehensive to put out multiple songs of the same song i mean there are remixes that's obviously been a part of culture for a long time but like are they i don't know like is that something that's pretty popular like for people to put out multiple versions like a slowed down version and then version two and then obviously the 100 gex remix yeah well you you see on youtube a lot like a lot of like if you could type in like a lot of songs and then type in slowed plus reverb and mm. you'll see them on YouTube and people will make them for free on YouTube. So I think what the idea was for the Never Met Slowed version was like, okay, like this is kind of a thing. Like, why don't we like put this out as a release so people can hear it on streaming and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I definitely think that was a really good move. And also version two kind of happened because we put out the song and then Lucas Lex was like, hey, do you, could, could I like take this song and, and remix it and, and put Elliot on it and, yeah. stuff so that was that was all thanks to lucas lex but That's then cool. yeah the 100x remix was definitely like they're like okay like remix like what should we do and we're like 100 gex like gotta make it happen yeah, right <laughs> so um i don't really see that a ton like in the hyperpop communities like people remaking songs rehashing songs where i do see it a lot is in the mainstream what was considered the mainstream pop world right. you know with like songs like old town road that got remixed like a million gazillion totally. times yeah right like i think it's just a way to keep hyping up a release for sure and i think that um artists and, and labels really take to that because they're like okay we we have something we have something hot and we kind of want to not i don't want to say milk it but like we we kind of want to like take it to another level while we're working on a, another thing and stuff like kind of totally yeah, you right. Know. I mean, I think it's great. You never know, like, what each project, like, where each project is going to go. And exactly when you have a song that takes off, it's like, you know, like, let's, yeah, like Old Town Road. It's like, you don't know if that artist is ever going to have, um, Lil Nas X is ever going to have, like, a song that hype again. I mean, right. hopefully, hopefully they do, but like, yeah, it's like, you might as well just keep rolling with the momentum as long as you can. That's like, fun and you know just bring more collaborations like like i know in that song it's like all these just crazy collaborations you know like obviously billy ray but oh then my gosh like, uh, and uh there's like the little mason ramsey kid does a verse you know it's just yeah. like crazy <laughs> it's it it's very fun too because like it opens up a world of possibilities like i mean definitely like if if we were making that song and we had access to 100 gex then we would have put them on the original version, like hands right, down, right. definitely. Yeah. But the thing was like, since the song blew up and now like we have access to, to that, we were like, okay, now let's, now let's reimagine it like this and stuff. So I, I think as long as you don't overdo it, it could, it could definitely be fun. I mean, I've definitely been thinking about these songs I've been working on right now, like giving them to people and being like, okay, I, I'd like you to do a remix and stuff. Uh, just cause, even like, before they're released, you're like already planning for like a remix potentially. Not like planning, planning, but kind of like, oh, it'd be cool if I could get a hold of this guy. Um, mm -hmm. Given that, given like the song does well or whatever, and it 
that they're down for it and like it, it would be cool but like just like thinking of yeah. stuff like that like how can i kind of give more life to these songs than is expected you know yeah, totally totally that's cool like you did that with your song hey Gigi." there's like two versions yeah right i like re i like to re-release especially like when it's a new kind of a new session just to kind of like illustrate where the new direction is going but yeah it's also just we'd been playing that one for so long live that it had kind of just grown into a new and one is like why not just put that out there too and see if people dig that you know right exactly yeah. yeah um i was gonna mention your song i think it's on stinky um stinky yeah yeah when there's like a full drum kit that comes in right at one point yeah. like, or like a pretty or maybe it's a sample but it's like a pretty like drum like kit beat that comes in mm -hmm. um and you mentioned playing bass that's what brought you to belmont and brought you to nashville do you see yourself like in trying to integrate more of like a more like rock or like uh, more of like a you know live band context to glitch gum and also like since this whole project has been during the pandemic have you even thought about like what a live show would look like or do you have interest in that at all definitely i am thriving for the day that we can bring shows back i really want to like cool. these songs are meant to be played live like I, I make hype music so that I can like get other people hype and I, I want people right. to mosh and, and throw down and have fun. So definitely been thinking about that. I mean, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but my brother Seth is a, is a great drummer and, uh, oh, cool. and he, and he's been playing drums for me. Uh, so like what we'll do is we'll have tracks running and I've, I've been doing, I've done like a couple live streams and stuff like that like to test like test out this format what we've been doing is like playing lots of tracks we have live drums um and like i have like a little vocal processor that i run a mic through and i can pitch up form and and, and use auto tune and stuff so that's kind of how we get the glitch gum sound which is right. really cool but that's so your cool, question man. thank you i appreciate it to your question about like guitars and bringing live instruments into my recordings i have actually been doing that i have a song called pizza that i put out in october which is it's it's very much a like mm. curve from things i've done before it's like a pop punk song like a fallout boy kind of song and, and i also have another one that i'm really? working on that's yet to be released so i've i've definitely been working on like bringing those influences and like also like i've been working on a lot of songs that do have guitar in them and, and stuff so i'm definitely but it's also it's definitely an interesting concept bringing like organic instruments into this very computerized genre but i think we're like doing right. it in a way that like makes sense you know totally at least to me i'm i'm the artist i'm in my own world right now you know <laughs> right i mean uh i mean gex and like some of the other music i've listened to some other hip-hop does occasionally like have rock elements but i feel like that might be and you would know a lot more than me, but I feel like that could be a potentially like a, just like a pocket that's a little bit un, undiscovered. Like, and even even the whole, I mean, as you said, like I feel like hyper pop has really expanded in popularity during the pandemic. So I, I do feel like a lot of artists that people are listening to are figuring out, you know, going to eventually in 2021, hopefully cross that bridge. And it'll be interesting to see how the genre uh, continues to uh, innovate and translate in a live context, since it is such uh, and internet culture as, as of now. Yeah. That, that'd be so awesome to see. And yeah, you're right. A hundred Gex does like use some guitars in their songs and it's, I think it's very tasteful and also like it definitely adds like an element of nostalgia whenever they do that. And so like, I, I think that's really cool, but yeah, I, I am interested to see how like hyper pop artists would perform live. I like, right. I wonder if they'll, if they'll all do kind of like the rapper format of like, they have tracks and it's just them on stage because because gex does that it'll be the two of them they'll play instruments sometimes they'll do like jam sessions but mostly it's like they'll have the track and then they'll just kind of go crazy right which i think really serves the energy of hyper pop but also like i i'm i'm a musician i'm in nashville like i i do kind of want to bring some elements of musicality whenever like i do a, a live show or whatever especially with these like pop punk songs i definitely want to like bring people to play guitar or like i play guitar or whatever like kind of make those happen you know yeah well do you feel like this project um 
you know, like continues to serve like you and your full appetite of like creativity? Or do you feel like your music and glitch gum more serves like one inclination or one like avenue of your artistic journey and you have other things that you're not sure if they can quite like fit into the context? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it really depends. I've really been working on like trying to merge everything, all my influences into this kind of project. Um, right. But there are some things that kind of don't fit that. Somehow I've managed to make them fit. Like once I was like, I really want to make like a Phoebe Bridgers kind of song. Um, and I do have the, the Phoebe Bridgers cover of Kyoto. Yeah, but right. I, I do. I am working on a song that's literally like, it's it's like the first half is like a Phoebe Bridgers song, but it's like the glitch gum voice over it. And it's and it's ridiculous. And then like it kind of turns into like a, a typical kind of song for me. But like really what I kind of try to do is like if I have an influence trying to like work it in into what I'm doing. And and if it's if it's not like if it doesn't come across as well thought out and like creative, it usually comes off as like funny because it because I'm. Yeah, like I, I've experimented. Like, what if I took, what if I did a pop song and put the glitch gum vocal on it? What if I did a folk song and put the glitch gum vocal on it? Like, just right. kind of stuff like that. I think the barriers that I run into with glitch gum is if I if I try to write something a little more artistic lyrically or a little more serious. Not that my music isn't like serious, but like, I feel like mm. once I get too art, I'd be writing a song and I get really articulate. And it doesn't feel right with like the rest of the lyrics that I've written, which are very like, like very not vague at all. They're raw. They're vulnerable. They're like, I, I say what I need to say, whatever. But sometimes totally. I'm like, I kind of I want to get colorful and stuff like that. But then it's like, this just doesn't feel right. So that's really the barrier that I run into. Musically, I try to like do everything because I feel like I can do everything in hyper pop. Yeah. I feel, like I, I feel like there's not really a ton of boundaries. I think so too. Yeah, it's a totally open world. It, uh, but yeah, I will say it. That is interesting. I think lyrically, the genre and like does lend itself to a specific personality when it comes to the lyrics that other types of like lyricism might not naturally feel as inclined in that space. It would be interesting to see, uh, you know, more like psychedelic and more, uh, I don't know, more imagery and also just like there, there. I think there is there's a lot of seriousness to the genre, but it's almost in more of like a surface way of communicating these like very difficult things you know like the music does deal with a lot of uh sadness or anxiety or disappointment but it is kind of more in like a playful way when it's being like communicated definitely and that's definitely a thing that drew me to doing hyperpop music kind of like i was like oh i can actually just say what i want to say and like right. i can i and it's and it's just like I, oh, I'm allowed to kind of be messy and be honest and stuff. And especially with like the kind of high pitched voice that I've been utilizing, it's like, oh, now nah, I think I really have room to say what I want to say and not, sh not, I wouldn't say sugarcoat it, but like, I feel like a, a metaphor is kind of like you have something you want to say and then you find the way to say it. Whereas now I'm just saying what I want to say, you know, this, right. th this is the idea. This is not the line that like these lines are, are the idea, you know, <laughs> like, Totally. That's what I like about it. But at the same time, it's, it's kind of like sometimes it feels like it kind of does a discredit to like my personal writing ability, mm. you know? Yeah. And that's not even a pride thing. It's just like sometimes, y you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I really think that your song, Do You Think About Me, is like a just fantastic pop song. Like the lyrics, everything is just gold. It's just it's just Thank everything you. about it. The I love the ooze, like the the BGVs, uh, just the whole thing. And, I, and then the whole song starts with this, like, it's like rave music at first. Yeah. And then, and then it enters into this really, I mean, it's a really sweet pop song. It's a really sweet song. That, that's Thank definitely you. my favorite one so far. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. And it's gaining I, a lot I of popularity, it. too. Yeah. It crossed 100,000 streams maybe a few weeks ago, which is yeah, ridiculous. That. That's crazy. Like, I never thought I would reach like the 1000 stream mark ever <laughs> yeah right then. Like, like over i was 1, so used to the less than 1000 on all my songs you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. so i'm just thankful i'm just thankful <laughs> it uh 
do you feel like now that the genre is becoming more popular, do you feel like there's more play, like playlisting opportunities and, and ways to help you get more streams and more exposure that isn't just from self-promotion, which can be at times exhausting as like an independent artist. It's like, you're like, how many times can I post on Instagram? Like to get people to like, listen and follow me. But when you have like a playlist or something, it's like, that's so liberating. To just get all these streams and organically, you know? Right. And that's a thing that I've really been thankful for with like the never met placements and like the Kyoto placements, um, stuff like that. That's really just been out of my control. Just like Spotify is like, Oh, we really like this. You know, I've really been thankful for that. And I, I think with the genre gaining popularity, um, I think there is more, like, there, there are definitely more places for placements than there were for me, like, months ago. But right. at the same time, like, there's, like, a million pop playlists on Spotify. There's, like, a million rap playlists. Right. But Hyperpop has the one playlist on it's Spotify. It's called Hyperpop, right? It's called Hyperpop. Yeah. And then Apple Music has a playlist called Glitch and stuff like that and so i feel like there's only like one big playlist per platform that i could get mm -hmm. on and then i'm set but but it's been really cool because like my kyoto cover actually got on a playlist called misfits uh 2.0 which is cool. it's all like alternative kind of like young alternative kids and so to kind of <laughs> cross the the barrier with that was kind of like a milestone for me it was like, oh, like I'm not just hyperpop. Maybe like other kinds of people would want to listen to me too. So I think that's where like the other placement or playlist placements come in is like, you know, like people are like people from other sides are like, oh, we we like this music too. Totally, you know, totally. Um, unless they unless like hyperpop just blows up to the point where you have different shades of hyperpop and then di like. Spotify editors make different playlists for all those kind of moods, it's like subgenres, and as it becomes more of a, it becomes more popular. There's more room to like dissect, and you have like subcategories, right? Exactly, yeah. Once we get like a a new crop of like all kinds all kinds of flavors, we can kind of separate it into sort of things, kind of like how the pop playlists are like, oh, here's pop music to pump you up. Here's chill pop music. Here's music right. for teens and stuff like that. Yeah, kind of totally. like. I feel like that's when we could get more, like opportunities to like shine in certain areas you know totally do you feel like uh are there certain things besides just putting out new music besides just working on the next song or the next album or whatever it is are there other uh artistic endeavors in any sense you know that you want to pursue with glitch Club? like are there other like fashion or you know something on the internet like you know live stream and visual and all that um I've definitely thought about live streaming a few times. Uh, I think it'd be cool. Uh, I usually have like very colorful ideas for like kind of trying to take it to the next level. I just feel like I'm not at that place yet yeah. in my catalog, but I would love to maybe make like, I would love to make like a, a long form kind of video r relating to an album or maybe like a series or like um once I had an idea to make like a, a, a musical at one point like a like a like a chiptune kind of musical Whoa. like that would be ridiculous just yeah. kind of like stuff like that um the, like definitely wanting to pair visuals with my music as much as possible like the the like farther i climb the more i i want to like reach out to people that i i can and be like i want to like take my ideas and present them visually um, I've, I've really been trying to get into that, um, totally. as I grow. Cause, cause like, I, I didn't really have the resources to, to do that before. And then now I kind of do. And so when I was making this pizza song, I, I, I reached out for a video and it was crazy. I, they put my face in a pizza box and stuff. Like it was awesome. Like who is they? I want to do more who, who, stuff like that. Was that one of your friends or did you, who um, did you reach out to to make that? Um, it's a dude named Zeph, Zeph and Bean. Um, he's cool. fr from a band called Ill Spectre. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. And, and he, yeah, he's done videos for Archie Summers and stuff like that. Really That's cool sick. guy. No, he he definitely brought the vision together with that one. Um, I I would love to get more animated with my visuals once I once I find like have a good budget for that and right. find good animators and stuff. A lot of people have been saying. A couple of people have said, hey, you should make your music into like a children's 
kind of TV show. It's very like whoa, child, like youthful and like like that. Would, that would be crazy. Like I don't know. I I definitely would love to expand Glitch Gum in realms that aren't music, but I think the music is always going to be at the center and the focus because totally. that's just what I love to do, and that's what I've been doing my whole life. You know, the uh, the canvas animation, which uh, for the for the Hundred Gex remix uh, is really sweet i mean it is just a total trip in every way it's just amazing oh it's so good yeah it is it's so good. so good i definitely want to work with lord stingray on more animated is that who that was stuff. lord stingray just like that lord stingray is the, write that is the handle for for that ridiculous wow. for for real ridiculous <laughs> lord stingray it blows my mind lord is there a stingray. music video too or that is it just like check, check just making out. uh you know, just making a canvas just for Spotify and keeping it fresh. For the 100, there's only a canvas. There's a lyric video. It's an animated lyric video and like Whoa, this is an official cool. stream video. Oh my but, goodness. but for the, uh, are you looking at his, his profile now? Dude, the whole feed is just like it's so insane. A lot of Mario so themes trippy. too, it looks like. like some it's like nostalgic stuff. video game uh, influences really yeah. really cool stuff really yeah, love to so see what cool. they're doing all the time shout out lord stingray yeah for real well that's interesting that you know you mentioned chiptune and one thing that i you know immediately recognized when i started listening to gex and stuff was it is a very innovative and uh, new genre but i in like fifth grade and sixth grade i got really into like say i guess it'd be a, i think it was pronounced saber pulse and like a lot of like chiptune music like 8-bit right music. And so I do feel like there was yeah. something like 10, 15 years ago that was happening that, uh, you know, and, and it's been happening the whole time, but like these ideas of like ever like gaming, I guess ever since when, like the eighties or whenever eight bit music, whenever it was invented, <laughs> um, I guess probably the seventies and uh, like, and we all, we all play video games and we all listen to that music. Like, it's obviously going to be a part of our subconscious, like something that we love. But then a right. lot of people, they, they'll play like Mario or something. And then they'll grow up and just like listen to a diff completely different genre of music. And they just consider that music like a part of gaming. But like for me, when I read, when I got into like chiptune in like sixth grade, it was like, of course I already loved it because I've been listening to this kind of music through the games I played for years. And so there's right. like an obvious like love for it that I already had, you know what I mean? exactly it's kind of built into you and i think that's the story with a lot of like hyper pop fans because i think what they're doing is they're combining all these influences that they've they've had in their childhood and their like adolescence and kind of combining them into like a futuristic kind of thing like i i hear lots of chiptune lots of pop punk lots of dubstep lots of like scene core kind of like all these influences that have kind of come and come and gone and also like MySpace kind of early internet, right. early YouTube kind of influences. Uh, when I showed, uh, I showed Hand Crushed by a Mallet to my freshman roommate. Well, they're still my roommate. But the first thing I said was, this sounds like that one, uh, the I Ain't Got No iPhone song uh, by Perry Whoa. Grip, who also did like the Raining Tacos song. Right. Like that kind of voice and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I never thought of that, but that's genius. <laughs> I yeah, think, totally. I think hyper pop, I think, I always like to kind of joke and say there's like steps to becoming a hyper pop fan that you go through in your childhood. Like for me, it was, I liked Skrillex. I liked that gummy bear song. I liked old YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I like death grips kind of all going into 100 Gex because they all kind of bring it together, you know? So you totally. bring up an interesting point and I love that. Yeah, totally. Right. That That is, wow. That's a really interesting way to put it. It, there is, to really reckon with all the different influences and like things that you and en you enjoy and all, all the different forms of art, like considering gaming, like, and it, I mean, it is, it, you know, I consider yeah. a really, really impressive art form. And, and sometimes we like fragment all of these art forms and music is just its own thing. And, but, but more and more as we're now kind of moving into like a modern and we've all had social media now for a long time, you know, like I probably had Instagram since, you know, for 10 years or something, you know, it's like we're moving Wild. in some ways. Yeah, like it's been a part of everyone's culture for a long time, you know, um, yeah. longer than we longer than we think. And, and and part of it, the whole thing is moving towards like influencers and, you know, whatever that is. But 
there's also <laughs> whatever that is yeah <laughs> but like for other like content creators and people who are like on those you know obviously big social media but also like twitch and discord and there's just a whole world of like where it, of course there's no longer going to be a barrier of like this is where i make music and this is what i do for like visuals and this is gaming it's like why why would that not all just culminate because they're all on the same screen and you know it's just of course it's gonna keep it's all the internet you know? yeah right <laughs> it's very interesting did you say you're working on a specific uh specific project right now or do you have anything like in in the recent works that you're working on in or is it all secret yeah i mean it's it's not like secret secret but i definitely want to save a whole bunch of the details until i'm actually ready but i Ooh. will tell you i'm working on a project i'm i'm actively like trying to put out singles and stuff in preparation for that project i got some stuff coming out earlier this year and i'm just gonna keep trying to make music and and let me tell you i will tell you this i'm so proud of what i've been doing recently and this project that i'm working on i feel like it's really an evolution from kind of what i've done and i say that from from a point of like just kind of like wow kind of like I'm proud of myself, you know, like I'm, sure, I'm not yeah. trying to like flex or anything, but it's just like, I t take pride in my progression as an artist because music is what I love to do and stuff like that. Right. So to see as you should, thank you. And I, I'm sure you feel the same way with your new projects as well. So to see like my production and my, my art, my, or my lyricism and like everything kind of, I feel like I'm kind of becoming more myself. I feel right. like, everyone starts off ripping off their influences and I'm no different. I put, I put out piano teacher and people were like, people were like, this is the, this is the 100 gex song. It sounds like, and you're like, yeah, you're right. I was listening to that song when I, when I made it, it was, it was totally that. Huh. But now I, now I feel like I'm kind of like getting to the point where those influences are like recognizable, but it's not like super pinpointable. And I'm kind of coming into my own, which is really cool. It's like a new artist. And I'm, I'm sure you've felt the same way before. Like, wow. The, like you had a project. Like, wow, this is really, I feel like I'm really being my own kind of, you know. Totally. Yeah. So and I'm excited for, for what's about to happen. You know, I think that's awesome. You know, in terms of like having a specific influence and that being obvious, you know, we live in a culture now where we, you put one thing out and you can immediately people are responding to it and receiving it, you know, like you think Instantly. about 50, 60 years ago when bands like, let's take like the Beatles who, you know, every, a lot of people know their story, but it's like, they're playing eight hours a night in a bar uh, for a long the time. Same bar and, for like months. Yeah, and they're playing in Germany and they're in, you know, when they put out their first album, they had already been a unit for so long, the working for so long that like they had all that time to develop before showing it to anyone. And when, you take a project like Lich Gum, you put out Piano Teacher, and people are already saying that. It's like, that's your first song. Of course, it's going yeah. to, you know, you, which I didn't even recognize that. But but if people are saying that, it's like, who cares? All you can do is just keep making the music that feels right to you. And, and you're eventually going to find your own sound, as, as all artists do. You know, it's like, right. you, just, you can't slow down or stop or worry about any of that. Because what you love about music, there's, I don't know, it's just... You just got to keep going. That's just you what just got to keep play. going. It's it's the progression of every artist. No artist is different. Like you could you could trace back to any any artist and be like, oh, like their early work was definitely like imitating this. Because yeah, I mean, you that is where you start, and then totally. you kind of figure figure it out as you go, and you're only gonna get better with time. You know, right. that's that's every artist. So, but you do bring up an interesting point, like. It used to be you were a band for years until before people would hear your your label debut, and that was that was like what could be considered your first album because no one had heard of you up until this point. Right. And I'm in a unique situation where, by the grace of God, I had a song kind of go up while I was figuring myself out. So, so right. it, it's now like eyes are on me while I'm kind of like. I gave birth to this project in March. I, w I was probably like two months old when Never Met started going up. So like, right. I need to learn how to walk and talk and all that stuff. It's just ridiculous, yeah. you know? So it's, it's very interesting that we kind of live in a, in a society where like, you are watching an artist grow, like actively. Totally, totally. It's awesome. It's cool. Do you, 
when you were making Piano Teacher, you were you were in Nashville, but when you released it, you say you were in uh, Marietta. Is that what you said you were right now? Marietta, Georgia. It's a suburb that's like thirty minutes away from Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see if you know this. So I so I we gotta talk about Marietta for a second. My favorite band in like elementary school uh, is from Marietta. They were called Family Force Five. You remember that? I band? love Family Force Five. <laughs> Let's go, bro. I I was only allowed to listen to Christian music until I was ten years old. Right. And- yeah. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So, fa- oh my gosh, literally months ago, we were listening to Business Up Front um, in the car. First song, didn't even realize. He said, I was growing up in Marietta. And I was like, wait, hold up. They're from Marietta? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. I- yeah, totally. I That's one of my favorite. I mean, I'll never have an, an actual objective take on it. It's it's pure. It's so, so nostalgically tied. But I mean, that album that first album is like it's one of my favorite albums ever i I can listen to it anytime and i just think it's pop gold it's just so it's so fun it is so fun and they definitely like don't seem to care about what people think about their lyrics or their sound or whatever and i mean i'm not saying that kind of sounds like a backhanded compliment but obviously i love the music it's so good and i think it it i would consider one of the stepping stones into kind of what i'm doing now is like totally stuff like that it had like kind of crunk influences. It had like kind of new metal sorta, and then it had like pop and electronic. Yeah, I really mean, heavy riffs with like yeah, like pop. You know, I think they, they had like a synthesizer player who played like a guitar, and yeah, like they they influenced me uh, in a lot of ways because they were a band who, within that genre, within that a lot, you know, a lot of Christian music, at least at that time. And I, I don't know what all's going on with it nowadays, but you know, it's a lot of. It's a lot it, of the same. You can't take risks, you know, with with a community that's really judging you, like or like has has a harsh. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know what I'm saying. I don't want to. No, push, I, I understand but, uh, what you're saying. But like, uh, yeah. So, but they. I mean, they made a. They made an album that I feel like I don't even know how it like existed within that within scene, that circle. It, you know, it's just it, it, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. That's cool to hear you say that. Yeah, from Marietta, right from the same streets as you. That's cool. It's so it's so crazy, and I I moved to Marietta a couple couple years ago from Michigan, so it I wish that I, I could have said like oh I knew those guys growing up that would be right. so cool, but yeah no when I heard that I'm like wow I didn't know people came out of Marietta, but like totally. one of my like childhood favorite bands <laughs> from Marietta. So you you went you grew up all the way through high school in in Michigan, and then once you came to to uh, Belmont, your family moved down to Marietta, and that's where you like stay on breaks now almost i was i was lucky to spend my senior year in marietta cool um it but yeah i was i was about to graduate from high school and then like the summer of after my junior year um my my mom got an opportunity to to teach at georgia tech and so we we moved to georgia like like it was so cool and and obviously they're doing like super well and i, I love it. i love georgia it's, it's awesome but it was definitely a shock to like born in southfield michigan raised wow, yeah. near like the detroit metro area like that's all i knew and then going to georgia but i knew i was gonna end up in nashville anyways because right because you know seth made it from from michigan to to belmont and I, I I knew that wherever wherever I was living, I was gonna end up at Belmont and and probably in Nashville. So I was kind of yeah. like at peace with that part. But it was it was weird to like move to to Marietta and stuff. Right. But, um, yeah. That that that's kind of how it went. So when people ask where I'm from, I'm like technically I guess I'm from Michigan, but I I live in Georgia now, and this is kind of my home on, on breaks and, and stuff like that. That's cool. Do you so a lot of this music that you were making, you know, past the first i guess song or two were you making it here in your like bedroom in marietta yeah like half of the ep was was made in marietta and half of it in in nashville cool um that's awesome it's ridiculous like stinky came together here in marietta that song would not have happened without the pandemic because you know i was going through that thing that like all college freshmen are like i don't i don't know who i am i i don't i don't feel comfortable expressing this part of myself but i think something about being isolated and being with yourself you get more you you look at yourself more and it's kind of frustrating and intimidating but you also you grow more comfortable with yourself 
Yeah. And um, I saw a lot of my friends do that, and I saw myself do that, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just make a fun song and say some like stupid things and and have fun with my friends. All the people in that song uh, are from uh, the Legit Smitty band. Have you have you heard of Legit? No Smitty? way. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's Jake, Joseph, and Billy. We all did oh, wow. Pop Rock Showcase uh, earlier this year. And so those are my friends. And so I was really just having fun with my friends on that song, <laughs> you know? That's so sick. That's what do you, uh, what do you think of, of Nashville? Like, and I'd be curious specifically, do you think about like, when you think about the music you make, like hyper pop in, in Nashville, but also just like, what do you think about living? Do you enjoy living in the city? I, I enjoy living in Nashville. I, at this point, I don't like really like live in Nashville. I live in Belmont because I've been mm. on campus my whole life and stuff. So, right. But like, I've enjoyed living in Nashville. It is definitely a weird place for a hyper pop artist to, to come up yeah. given the, the culture surrounding Nashville and the culture surrounding hyper pop. Totally. But, um, I think I've found my own pocket in that sense and like found the community and stuff. And like, honestly, like I feel like a city is as good as the people and, and places that you, that you keep yourself around. And I so agree, yeah. I, I, I think I've definitely found like a really good community in Nashville and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful city mo- most of the time. Yeah. Like, um, thankful that like Belmont and, and, and where I live is like kind of like in the downtown, but like not like in the downtown, like near Broadway or whatever. I feel like I'd feel very suffocated if I lived in the city. Yeah. Um, I definitely like living in more suburban places. Yeah. Right. Like where you are in Belmont, it's like, a little bit cozier you can get around yeah yeah i don't really know how you describe that area but yeah it's not like a metropolitan like downtown with like skyscrapers and stuff but it is still the city and you can yeah i i really like living in nashville too obviously i've lived here my whole life exactly. and it's a, it is a beautiful place to be you know one thing i one thing i'll say is i found it's beautiful um a lot of opportunity i think that sometimes things that i see people have an inclination here to want to move to like new york or la and and obviously people some people should and you know yeah people should do whatever they want but um you know like let's say for instance the music you're making in the context of nashville it might be a little bit more rare but nashville has this weird thing where like that can almost be your ticket like because people do love music and they love entertainment so much that when you're doing something that's a little bit more unique people go crazy for it and you can be like you can really like ride the wave a lot quicker than i think if you're perhaps in one of those two bigger cities where there already is so much of everything. Nashville yeah. is a big music and big entertainment hub, but you can still stand out and like make moves, I think, a little bit quicker, especially earlier on in your career. That's just my take. Right. From, you know? There's like so much hyper pop in LA. Like, right, totally. I think the Gex both live in LA now. There's like a lot of people from that kind of scene that live in LA. Um, even CM10 lives near LA. Wow. Um, or his family does he he lives in utah uh as well like snap that's cool it's cool yeah no well, it's well, really cool does that make you want to move out there you're like man is everything is, do you think the culture is pushing you out there maybe after college to go to la um i wonder i would love to visit la for sure and kind of like get connected in that scene and i've made a lot of la friends and they're beautiful people and i'd love to see them I, I personally don't think I could live in LA or New York. Yeah. I think if I were to choose a music city, I would stay in Nashville, even though, like you said, I am a very rare case of, of artists and musician and genre wise. But like you said, like it does kind of make it easier to kind of make waves in your city. And also I just, I just kind of like the, the aesthetic of it better. Cause it's more suburban, more like natural than like yeah. living in NYC or LA or something like that. I feel like I, I could jive with that kind of like Nashville pacing a little better. That's really interesting. That's cool. Do, do you think that, I mean, obviously this is a tough question to answer, but when you think about glitch gum and you think about, you know, obviously this started this year. So you had to have had plans before this concept, like do you, uh, do you want to do like music? Is that, or are you one of those people who's like, I know my whole life I'm a musician first and foremost, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make it in an industry or is it more like, we'll see where this goes. And if one day I get tired, maybe I'll 
just jump and do a completely different thing with my life? I think the thing is, I'm never going to get tired of music. I yeah. hope not. I hope not. Right. Um, I have no other plans other than music. If it, if one day I decided that I don't like music, I don't know what I'd do with myself. I've literally built myself up to a point where I cannot do anything other than music. So if I were, right. but the thing is, I may, maybe, maybe years from now, glitch gum isn't the thing. Maybe I'll move to, to another music project and see how that goes. And if that doesn't work out, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go to, go to school again for, for teaching and be a music teacher or like a, maybe, maybe like get a job at pitchfork, for example, or something and, and write about music, yeah. be a journalist or something. I I don't know. I, I have no other plans than to stick within music related careers. Um, That's and cool. obviously I want to do glitch gum for as long as I can. Um, and as long as I want to, but, um, that's that's kind of why I'm staying. Why I have intentions to stay in Belmont, and get this bass degree, and and kind of become a session musician in Nashville and stuff. So that wow, really, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely the goal when I started. Is is to if nothing else happens, be a session musician and and also play for gigs and stuff. So I I'm still kind of keeping that goal, but I guess nowadays I'm kind of keeping it more tucked back. And Glitch Gum's kind of taking the forefront because I'm really proud of the music that I do. And if people like it, then I, then I want to keep making it. But I, I definitely kind of have that in my back pocket. I'm still working towards a degree and trying to do well in school so I can have that, you know, because I never want to not do music, you know? Yeah, right. Totally. I feel the same way. I know what you mean. It's something yeah. I want to do forever. And I don't know what kind of music I'm going to make, but it's something. There's just something special about the genre of music. Like, or the, the, the I mean, the art form of music, it's. I love so many art forms, but something resonates with me most about music. And that's not, I can't explain why, because it's not actually the superior. Like it's just, it just works the best for me. Just, I just love the story. I love a song. It's just a very beautiful thing. And it's so fun to create and so fun to like perform. And just the exactly. whole cycle of taking it from like writing it to like releasing it to performing it. It's just a, a really it's cool. It's magical. Yeah. It brings people together in a way that I cannot explain. Right. And in a way that I never want to find out because it's mm. just magical. And like, <laughs> and I, I just, I just want to stay in the magical realm of music and, and make things that I can't explain and, and, and have people be affected in a way that, that they can't really explain, you know? Totally. Or at least, at least I hope I, I, I don't want to say that, like my music will make you feel like all kinds of things, but like that, that's up to, that's up to the person. But like, yeah, if I'm able to do that, so thankful, so thankful. That's cool. That's a great perspective. Have you, I'm curious, have you had anyone from like, cause I guess you're only a couple years into college, right? You said you're a little bit younger. You're, you're younger yeah. than your brother who came the same year as uh future crib, I think. Right. Yeah. He just graduated actually. Cool. So that's awesome. But yeah, I'm a sophomore. Um, so that's just awesome. Kind of working, working yeah. into it. You know. Thank you. Appreciate. Do it. you uh? Do you have you had a lot of people like reach out or like follow the journey from like high school or like? And I, I'm just a little bit curious. And you don't even have to answer this, but like, and also just like personally, like your brother and like your your mom or anyone like close to you. Do they do they dig the music? Or are they are they do they love glitch gum? <laughs> I am happy to say that my parents do love my music. That's I was awesome. very, I was very concerned about that when I started making glitch gum. I'm like, totally. I, I don't really think they're going to get it or anything, but, um, they, they really like it and they really think what I'm doing is, is unique, uh, compared to like other artists, not to say that they're not unique, but what I'm doing right. is, is, is different as well. That's so um, cool. So I'm really blessed that that my whole family i mean seth is mixing my stuff right now and he's wow. he's been co-producing my album like like oh, my no family way. and and my no yeah ridiculous and it's awesome and working with him has been a blessing and my my dad just helped me build my website this week like my it's i am so blessed that my family has supported me through this and and said yes you you can do this so family check Friends from high school, yeah, I, I, I have had a few friends, and I'm blessed to say that they've been good friends, uh, yeah. like, follow me from high school and be like, wow, I remember when you did this in high school, and, and, and now, like, I remember watching your old pop punk band play 
an abandoned library in, in Canton, Michigan. Dude, that's so. <laughs> and sick. now you're on TikTok. That's so cool. And I, I mean, I have had a few, a couple people, been like, "Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but we went to high school together. Just wanted to say congrats on being famous and stuff." But I've been blessed that it's not been like a, a whole bunch of people, you know. <laughs> They're not like cloud chasing. It's like people who are just legitimately sweet people. Who it's are like it's not a lot of cloud chasing. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do kind of see that, but I just kind of respond with grace and and love, and that's all you, you can know, do because you never know what I people's intentions me. are. Yeah, totally. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. and I don't want to assume the worst, you know. Yeah, well, that's really sweet. I was just yeah. curious about that. that. That I I think we come from, you know, we haven't talked about this until this airing right now, but you know, it sounds like we come from similar backgrounds, and uh, I don't know. I I live here with my family, and family's a big thing for me, and so that is something that like. I can't really escape is like being interested and caring about what they think. You know, even sometimes I feel like maybe I put out a song and I'm like, I don't know if they're going to like this as much. Does your family like your music? I hope so. (laughs) Yeah. They're really supportive. You know, they, sometimes I feel like they don't always get what I'm going for. And that's why I was curious to ask you that because hyper pop specifically is such a genre that'd be like maybe a little bit more confusing to people who are a little bit older than us, but, but like, right. You know, yeah. My parents, they're, they are supportive and you know, sometimes it is makes me like i don't always know how they're going to react to my music like they'll give me an honest, right. an honest answer but uh but like understand that th- i Sorry. live here and so i know that and i have a good relationship with them and like going on walks with my family and stuff during during covid it's been during COVID. obviously nice. we've been gotten really close uh in ways we could have never predicted you know my goal was to be out on the road all year so you know right. i never could have predicted this but it is good and they are supportive so that's cool that's good that's awesome yeah no i've, I've definitely had those conversations with my family it's like yeah this is kind of what i'm going for and then stuff and i mean t- towards the beginning it was it was kind of like all new for for all of us but i i i think now they're they're starting to get it. and they'll amaze me sometimes they'll be like yeah i listened to this 100 gex song and i have to say like i i do kind of like what you're going for in, in a sense that's cool that's that. cool yeah Yeah, that's so awesome i i want to hear more about uh well i have a lot more questions for you we've reached the end of our hour block we can keep talking a little you know there's no there's no time limit but just you know i don't want to hold you too long but i am curious you said you 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 were talking about your band in michigan you said you played in an abandoned library that sounds like the sickest show ever oh my goodness that so there was an old middle school Uh, it, it used to be central middle school in canton um they since then turned it into um the the plymouth arts and recreation complex uh wow. P- the, the park parc and so there was there was a organization in that complex that one they they rented out one of the school rooms as a free rehearsal space for like up, upcoming teen bands to to play because they're like you know they can't play in their mom's basement the, or whatever. Like it's hard right. to get all these people like, let's just give them a space to practice. And so I had a band with my brother and one of my childhood friends. And then when he went off to college, we, we grabbed a couple more people from the scene and one of the show. And the thing was this organization who rented out the school room, they would have their shows in other parts of the school. So sometimes we would have shows in the library but the big stage, like the like the main stage, like the main stage moment was a gymnasium. So it was like we were either playing in a library or a gymnasium. But let me tell you, Unreal. it was so fun. Like yeah. I I remember being a kid and being like, I cannot wait to play the library. <laughs> like it was so cool. And that then and then it was like, I can't wait to play the gymnasium. That's when I know I've made it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm playing the gymnasium in an old oh, middle school. <laughs> so cool so fun diy moments i absolutely love diy scenes i do too i live for the diys as you know that's i mean i just love those like to me it's like this weird guitar hero dream come true when i'm playing in weird spaces like that you know you think for like all the stages on guitar hero like playing like a backyard yeah. bonfire like they're playing in like a bass yeah you know these crazy they're bass playing all those and stuff. things and you know you're actually like making it happen and stuff. yeah yeah I, I love the more weird of a context but like yo i had to show up to a library i just think that's so cool um that's awesome what was the weirdest show you've ever played quick side note <laughs> oh man i'm trying to think like locationally location wise let's see oh i gotta say uh i played in denton texas 
with Future Crib, uh, we were going down to South by and we played. It does. I don't think it exists anymore, but it was literally a convenience store that, for some reason, like a, like a like a gas station that did shows. And I have no idea, like how. Like we walked in, it's just not. It doesn't look any different. Like you know, the fluorescent lights. It's like uh, uh, there's this woman behind the the uh, you know ringing people, buying people cigarettes, and she's like, "Oh, you're here for the show." She's like, "Here are the XLR cables." It's just like what? And she's like, this because, "What?" It, it, was like, like, it was like a functioning convenience store, and you played in the back. <laughs> We're just playing like next to the Cheetos, like with the beer behind us. It's just like cr- the craziest thing. So, Were you behind like the the like the cold drinks freezer and stuff? Yeah, the cold drink. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing! Wow. Yeah. So that I mean, obviously the vibe was weird in certain ways, but I mean, how often? I mean, it's how just so cool. How often? You, yeah, exactly. So, um, awesome. if you ever get the chance to go down and play it, like at South by. There's just so many like unofficial shows down there just happening. People just popping off in every weird like nook and cranny that there can be a show. It's it's a really cool uh, vibe down there. So that's awesome. A lot of DIY. A- anyway. South um, the dream for sure. I would love to play festivals. If, oh, if dude. Allows. Yeah, you you totally can. And I, I think you will. You know, let me, uh, I'm excited to see that happen. I bet that'll happen soon. I, so appreciate it. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we? Before you peace out, any other questions or anything else you want to plug or anything? No, not really. I mean, for for the people for the people watching, if you want to, my my all my socials are glitch gum music, and that's two M's glitch gum music. Glitch right. gum on on all streaming platforms and stuff. I got I got stuff coming out early this year, middle this year, late this year. I like if you want to keep an eye for me, I, I would I would love that. But also, it's just been fun talking to you, man. Thank you so much for having me. Oh um, yeah, I've I've just really been blessed to have this conversation. <laughs> I have been too. It, you know, it really is a treat for me, and it's great to, uh, I guess, technically reconnect, but get to talk to you some. And uh, I, I, I for one, am a, am a big fan. I'm excited to see what you do next, and Thank I hope whenever uh, things open up a little bit more, that I get to see you around town and get to go to a glitch gum show myself <laughs> in Nashville. So that'd be sick. That would be awesome. I'll be I'll be looking for you out there. Yeah, for sure. I'm, um, I'm excited. Definitely keep in touch and, uh, you know, here. yeah, I'll see you around. Have, have a great night. Thanks. Yes. Again. Have a great night too. Happy holidays. Happy new year. Happy new year. Peace. Yeah. Bye.